Hello, I'm Simone, and welcome to the latest installment of my Everything Coming series. I'm going to cover the changes coming in Year 8 Season 4 of Rainbow Six Siege. This video will include screenshots and clips that supplement the voiceover, but there won't be any critical information that you can see but you don't hear about, so feel free to treat this as a video or a podcast, whichever suits you best. There will be timestamps and chapters if you're looking for something specific, and with that, let's get on with Everything Coming, Operation Deep Freeze. Something new I want to try in this video is recapping changes that occurred between the last Everything Coming video and this one. Big balancing updates can come out in mid-season patches and they tend to get lost, even though they often provide context to newer changes. Siege had some pretty big updates in the Year 8 Season 3 mid-season patch. For starters, the Frost rework released to the live build. This rework granted attackers the ability to extricate themselves from a welcome mat, the consequence of a debuff. Revival time via teammate or yourself was normalized to 4 seconds, but those who choose to revive themselves are afflicted by a 60 second debuff state. In this state, you cannot sprint, your movement suffers a 20% speed penalty, you leave a blood trail in your wake, and you periodically cry out. Players can only enter the down but not out state once per round, so attackers who found themselves injured prior to falling into a welcome mat will be immediately killed, and attackers who are revived from a mat will not enter the down but not out state again. Other operators also received loadout and balancing changes in the Year 8 Season 3 mid-season patch. Yana lost her frag grenades and received stuns and her gone 6. Finca traded her own gone 6 for frag grenades. Gridlock traded her breach charges and gone 6 for frag grenades. Sen's POF9 primaries recoil was adjusted on PC and console to have reduced recoil overall. Tachanka's DP27 LMG was increased from 49 to a whopping 60 damage. Finally, Warden was adjusted from a 2 health, 2 speed operator to 3 health, 1 speed. Some cross save functionality was also updated, so you may see more items and settings sharing between platforms. The Year 8 Season 4 roadmap is delivering most of what is promised. This season, we are getting a new Portuguese operator, a brand new map, and an update to frag grenades. However, the revamped shield mechanism needs a little more time for development so its release to live build is being delayed to Year 9, Season 1. But we will get to see a beta version of this rework in the Year 8 Season 4 lab test server. Finally, and a bit of bad news, the development on the privacy mode for console has been halted. Developers encountered some external challenges as well as changes occurring in the console's ecosystems that led to this decision. We hope to hear more about this in the future. But that's about all for the roadmap, so let's get on to hearing about Year 8 Season 4's brand new operator. Operation Deep Freeze will be introducing an icy new defender to the Rainbow Six Siege lineup. Isaac Nunez Oliveira will be joining the Wolfguard squad, led by Doc, thanks to his empathetic nature and insistence on civilian safety. A resilient member of the Special Actions Detachment, a Special Forces Maritime Unit of the Portuguese Navy, Tuberau will be bringing windows of opportunity and time to think to the defense. Tuberau is Portuguese for shark, and this operator may find a kindred spirit in Wamai's love of water, including the military grave dive gear he's equipped in. I'm also proud to announce that this operator is the next inclusion of queer representation in the game as a trans man. Tuberau's special ability is a gadget known as the Zodo Canister, a modern cryogenic container that houses liquid nitrogen and liquid oxygen that is combined to create a mixture with strong cooling capacities. Tuberau will bring four canisters to the field. The canister can be thrown and will spread this mixture on any surface upon impact to cause a host of debilitating effects on gadgets and operators alike. The canister will detonate immediately on impact and spread in a 3 meter radius from its center, or 6 meters from end to end, lasting for just about 12 to 13 seconds. The ice is rather indiscriminate in its effect, which makes for an interesting and high skill operator with the world as his oyster as far as opportunity goes. Both attackers and defenders who find themselves inside a Zoto canister's area of effect will experience the following side effects. Frozen footsteps will be left in their wake as they walk through the ice. These footsteps can even be visible from the surface below. Operators will come down with quite the chill, lending to an audible shivering and breathing sound cue. And they will be unable to see the feeds of observation tools because their phone will be a little bit on the fritz while frozen. Attackers under the Zoto canister's freeze effect will also be slowed down, unable to sprint. It also appears to affect repel. While it is generally indiscriminate, this is one key area where the ice doesn't affect everyone quite the same. Tuberau's ice doesn't just affect operators either. The Zoto canister affects almost every single operator and gadget, whether it be attack or defense, electronic or mechanical. Fortunately, the ice won't destroy anything, 
but gadgets in its affliction will generally find themselves disabled for about 12 seconds under a similar effect as Mute Signal Disruptor or Thatcher's EMP. I spent a long time trying to group these interactions in categories, and I had minor success such as gadgets that are jammed, operators that are jammed, etc, etc, but I realized there was a lot of overlap and it made for a pretty chaotic bulk of information. So instead, I'm just going to go through every attacker in alphabetical order, and then just try to summarize at the end. So let's get started. Ace's Selma Charge's progress will be paused. Amaru is affected only in the general sense of having the movement penalty, leaving footsteps, and shivering. Attackers that fall under this category from now on, I'll just say they're unaffected, but keep in mind it's only their unique ability that is unaffected, not the operator themselves. Ash's breaching round will pause and explode once the ice melts. Blackbeard is unaffected. Blitz will not be able to activate the flash in his shield if he's iced out. He also can't run, which is nice. Brava's connection to her drone can be severed by icing her or her clutch drone. If she's in mid-hack, this will result in a hack failure. However, icing the gadget she's hacking will not disrupt that progress. You need to target her or her clutch drone. If a hacked while my magnet catches the thrown Zoto canister, it will catch and release. Buck is unaffected. Capital will need to avoid firing his asphyxiation or smoke bolts at an area affected by the Zoto canister, because they will not detonate, ever. However, if an area is already on fire or smoked out, the ice will have no effect. It won't douse the flames, it won't snuff out the smoke. Dokubi cannot initiate her logic bomb call if she's iced out, nor can she initiate a hack on a fallen defender's phone. But if the phone is on the edge of the ice and Dokubi can reach it without being frozen herself, she can still hack a frozen dropped phone. Under an active logic bomb, defenders can hang up or avoid the call by being iced out themselves at any time while it rings. This behavior is consistent with that of mute signal disruptors. Finca cannot activate her adrenal surge if she's under the Zoto canister's effect. If she isn't and activates her adrenal surge, any teammate who is currently iced out when the surge activates will not receive its benefit. If Flores' drone is frozen in transit before it's armored, Flores will lose connection to the drone and it will be frozen until the status wears off, at which point it will continue in a straight path until its fuse timer runs out, after which it will armor itself and explode. You can shoot or pick up the unarmored drone while it's frozen to avoid this. If an armored Flores drone is frozen, it will be paused until the ice melts, at which time it resumes its detonation. The armored drone can also be picked up by Flores. Fuse can detonate a cluster charge if he is frozen, but the cluster charge will be jammed if the charge itself is frozen. This is consistent with other detonator logic in regards to EMPs and jammers. Tuberal can pause the deployment of a cluster charge on a reinforcement as long as it hasn't begun spitting out pucks yet. The tube that deploys the pucks will be visible, allowing for an easy way to dispatch a charge without that first normally insured puck deploying. If you freeze a deploying charge, it seems to negate any pucks after the freeze, but pucks that have already deployed will detonate. Glass is probably one of my favorite interactions of the bunch. If Glass himself is frozen, his thermal scope will not work, and if a defender is frozen, their heat signature will not appear for Glass. This could be a very interesting yet specific synergy with Warden if Smoke Grenades or Sen's ROU is in play with a Glass on Overwatch. Gridlock's Track Stingers will pause their deployment as long as the canister and its children tracks are in the area of effect. Grim's canister will not deploy bees while frozen, but if the bees have already deployed, it's too late. They will ping defenders and you cannot negate their tracking. Because the canister deploys its bees so quickly now, this is best served as a precautionary move than a reactionary one. Habana's ex Kairos pellets will be jammed if they haven't been activated yet, requiring Habana to detonate them after they've unfrozen. Detonating pellets can be paused by the Zoto canister, but they will resume on their own once the status wears off, if they're still there. Yana cannot deploy her clone if she's frozen, and her connection to her clone is destroyed if she or her clone are iced out. You can also technically destroy the clone by hitting it with the canister itself, but I only found that out by accident. This is because the Zoto canister is a throwable, meaning that when it gets bonked off of somebody, it does 5 damage. A frozen IQ cannot see through her scanner, and she cannot see iced out gadgets either. Since the Zoto canister is a mechanical device, she cannot scan it. Jackal scanner will be deactivated anytime he's in the area of effect of the ice. Callie's lance will be paused if frozen, but will finish its detonation afterwards. Lion cannot initiate a scan if he is iced out. And if a defender who is being detected by the EE-1D enters a Zoto canister's area of effect, the tracking will be negated even after they leave. Maverick is unaffected, but it felt harder to torch a frozen wall, particularly on the edges. It felt like there was some sort of resistance. 
Montaigne was unaffected, but this may be the result of a bug, because on the test server it seemed like Monty shouldn't be able to extend or retract his shield while iced out because of a pop-up that said La Roque shield is jammed. However, I could deploy the shield just fine. I do not know which is the intended behavior, but it would be an interesting counter to Monty. Nook cannot use her Hell Presence Reduction device while in the area of effect of a Zoto canister. It will deactivate. Nomad's air jab will not trigger while frozen. Osa is unaffected. Ram's boogie will be frozen by the Zoto canister, whether it is activated or not. If it was activated prior to freezing, it will continue its trajectory on its own once it has been unfrozen. Sen's ROU screen will pause as soon as it hits the ice's radius, but will continue on its path once freed. Sledge is unaffected. Thatcher's EMP is also unaffected, which was slightly more surprising since it has a delay in its activation. This does put it in line with the impact EMP's lack of effect on or by the Zoto canister, though. If Thermite's exothermic charge is placed on a frozen wall or frozen pre-detonation, it cannot be detonated until the effect wears off. However, if the exothermic charge is frozen mid-detonation, then it will resume its progress on its own, and in the meantime Thermite is able to place his second charge while he waits. This is because the detonation already occurred, thus freeing up Thermite's gadget status, as it were. Otherwise, Thermite usually isn't able to have two exothermic charges up at the same time because detonation is required in between, similar to Fuse. Twitch's drone will be frozen if it enters the area of effect of the ice. Twitch cannot access her observation tools if she's iced out like any attacker. Ying's Candela will be frozen if it's iced out before it detonates, but it will continue its path once freed. However, you can shoot the Candela while it's in a frozen state, which is a much easier target than its current, fast-paced, unfrozen counterpart both in timer and movement. If Ying is iced out, her goggles malfunction and she can be flashed by her own candela. Zero's Argus camera will lose connection while it's in the area of effect of a Zoto canister. Zofia is unaffected. Chubral's gadget can also affect attacker secondary gadgets by jamming breach charges, claymores, drones, and hard breach charges. Attackers will also find their movement hindered on repel, similar to the movement penalty when walking through the ice. EMP impact grenades, stun grenades, and smoke grenades have no effect on the Zoto canister, nor does it have an effect on them. Frag grenades and the Gon-6 are also immune to the ice, but they can also be used to destroy the canister. If you bonk a canister off of an attacker, it'll do the customary 5 points of throwable damage and there will be a slight delay in its activation, because it needs to hit a surface that is not an operator. Finally, the Zoto canister has no effect on planning the diffuser. The Zoto canister does not discriminate when it comes to attacker or defender gadgets. Because of this, Tuberal will need to be more mindful when he ices out an area because it may disable critical defender utility at a critical time. These ones group a little easier than the attacker's side. The following operator gadgets will be temporarily disabled while iced out. Alibi's Prismas, Aruni's Surya Gates, Bandit's Batteries, Ella's Concussion Mines, Frost's Welcome Mats, Jaeger's ADSs, Kaid's Electro Claw, Capcan's Entry Denial Devices, Lesion's Goo Mines, Malusi's Banshees, Mozzie's Pests, Mute's Signal Disruptors, Smoke's Grenades Themselves, Thorn's Razor Blooms, Thunderbird's Kona Stations, Valkyrie's Black Eye Cameras, and Wamai's Magnets. The following operators are unable to activate or use their gadget while in the Zoto Canister's area of effect. Clash's Electric Shock on her shield, Vigil's ERC-7, and Warden's Smart Glasses. And we do have some more interesting or specific cases in alphabetical order by operator. A zombie's kunai will not deploy its Kiba barrier if it's thrown into an iced out area and she will need to pick it back up. Echo's yokai will drop to the floor if it's frozen. Echo and defenders cannot access or use a frozen yokai. If one of Fenrir's armored F0 dread mines is iced out, it will open up and become vulnerable, similar to being EMP'd. An activated mine will not trigger while frozen. If Goya's Vulcan canister is shot while frozen, it will be expended without deploying any fire. The ice cannot be used to douse existing flames similar to Capital. Maestro's evil eyes will be jammed while iced out and they will open slightly, making them vulnerable to destruction. This could be used to dispatch evil eyes that Brava has hacked. While Pulse can have his scanner out while he's iced, it is jammed and won't detect heartbeats. An attacker who is frozen will still have a heartbeat that Pulse can see as long as his scanner itself is not jammed. Solus cannot use her scanner if she's in the area of effect of a Zoto canister. However, unlike IQ, Solus can still see gadgets that are iced out. Debatably, this may be a bug. The Chonka's incendiary grenades will not go off in the ice, the same as Capital and Goya. Unaffected defenders include Castle, Cavera, Doc, Mira, Oryx, and Rook. The Zoto canister can also affect the defender's secondary gadgets. 
Bulletproof cameras, default cameras, nitro cells, observation blockers, and proximity alarms will all cease to function while under the freeze effect. Barbed wire and deployable shields are unaffected by and do not affect the Zoto canister. Impact grenades are unaffected and can be used to destroy the canister prematurely. So, to try and sum it up, two-brow Zoto canister causes a frozen status effect that is almost entirely indiscriminate in its ability to jam gadgets and operators. The key difference between attackers and defenders is simply that defenders do not receive the movement penalty inside the ice. Operators that have gadgets that communicate wirelessly cannot be used when the operator is frozen, and gadgets that are frozen, whether they be electronic or mechanical, will also cease to function until the effect wears off. If a gadget was frozen in the middle of an action, detonation for example, it will typically resume its progress where it left off as soon as it becomes unfrozen, with no interaction required from the original party. The Zoto canister's indiscriminate nature creates a unique challenge for synergizing. I reckon a careless or malicious Tuberau could easily surpass Castle as an operator that can hinder their team as much as help, but there's still room for plenty of teamwork with Tuberau and his fellow defenders. The Zoto canister can synergize well with gadget denial operators like Mute, Kaid, and Bandit to deny hard breaching. You may end up disabling your friendly gadgets too, but you're still buying time. Plus, the ice only affects the surface it's directly on, so if you're able to place a battery or electroclaw outside of the ice's area of effect, it can still electrify the wall and destroy iced out gadgets. This can help bandit or Kai tricking, particularly against multiple breachers. The vertical visibility of footsteps through the ceiling can be useful for netting nitro cell kills, but again, be careful you don't plan on detonating a frozen C4. Tubrow can benefit from intel operators like Pulse or Solus to optimize his use of his Zoto canisters. Finally, Tubrow can synergize well with trap operators like Ella and Fenrir as long as you're mindful of not disabling the traps at critical moments. Being able to restrict an attacker's options or movement coming off of a trap being triggered can be a fatal combination. Imagine pushing into sight, triggering a concussion mine, and then being frozen so you can no longer run away while experiencing a significant debuff. The Zoto canister also comes with a handful of counters on the attacking side. Primarily, the canister is perfectly destructible. It's susceptible to bullets, melee, sledges hammer, grenades, and lasers from operator gadgets like Twitch's shock drones and Zero's Argus cameras. Even inside the area of effect of the ice, frag grenades and Zofia's impact grenades are not frozen, so they're good options for dealing with a canister at range if waiting the 12 seconds is not an option. If the canister is destroyed, the ice and its effect immediately dissipate. Tuberal will need to be careful of his placement to ensure the canister can't be immediately destroyed. With a 3 meter radius spreading from the canister at the center, this can greatly impact efficiency. A Zoto canister will not impede a Maverick from breaching a wall at any time. Finally, keep in mind that the freeze effect only disables gadgets. If you're concerned a gadget will be destroyed when the effect wears off, you can pick up your gadget to keep it safe. So long as it was a gadget you can pick up in the first place. For example, yes you can pick up a frozen thermite exothermic, but no, you cannot pick up a Hibana X Kairos pellet. Tuberau is entering the fray with a pretty decent loadout. For primary options, Tuberau can choose between the MPX SMG, shared with Valkyrie and Warden, or the AR-15 DMR, previously only available to Maverick. Tuberau's MPX has access to all five barrel attachments, flash hider, compensator, muzzle brake, suppressor, or extended barrel. Both vertical grip and angled grip are available as well. For sights, his MPX only has access to the non-magnifying 1X optics, and you can bring the underbarrel laser if you so desire. Tuberal's AR-15 has the barrel attachment choices of muzzle brake or suppressor, access to both vertical grip or angled grip, and the underbarrel laser. As a Defender DMR, Tuberal's AR-15 will have access to the optics from the 1.5 times and below, which is a balancing choice in line with Aruni's own DMR. Tubral only has a single option for secondary weapon, which is the P226 Mark 25 handgun, shared with the SAS operators Sledge, Thatcher, Smoke, and Mute, as well as Cali. You can equip the muzzle brake or suppressor on his handgun, as well as the optional underbarrel laser. For secondary gadgets, Tubral can bring either one nitro cell for environmental destruction or operator elimination, or two proximity alarms for intel and detection. He'll be bringing this loadout into the game as a two-speed, two-health operator. In general, Tubrow is an extremely flexible operator, capable of his utilization melding to the player's style and intent. You can easily roam or anchor to assist your team in disrupting and delaying the attack. As such, his operator specialties include anti-entry and anti-gadget, given his Zoto canister's ability to freeze both attacker's movement and gadgets across the board. If I had to summarize Tubrow and his gadget, I'd say it's a powerful tool in buying time to think. Each of his four canisters can buy up to 12 seconds to re-strategize, reposition, or counter a push, in a game like Siege, every second matters. 
I'm looking forward to seeing the creative ways players use Tuberdal coming into Operation Deep Freeze. Alright everyone, it's intermission time, because I need to do that thing as a content creator where I pause the video to promote my channel. If you're finding this information useful, please consider liking and sharing this video so more people can see it. I upload an everything coming video every season, so consider subscribing if you want to see more Siege content from me. I upload a variety of content, primarily in Siege, including videos and shorts. If you enjoy live streams, I stream weekly at twitch.com forward slash Simone. The links to all of my active socials are in the description of this video. I appreciate any and all support you're willing to give. With that, let's get into the balancing changes being introduced in Operation Deep Freeze. In addition to the new Defender Tuberal, several operators and operator gadgets are receiving balancing changes in the new season, including frag grenades. Historically, frag grenades are highly lethal and precise secondary gadgets capable of mass gadget destruction and operator elimination. This powerful gadget will be reworked in the new season with the goal of bringing its power in line with other secondary gadgets, which are intended to be weaker versions of primary gadgets. Current player skill could turn frag grenades into better versions of most operator abilities, such as Ash's Breaching Round, which is something the developers want to mitigate. Developers experimented with several solutions to the nade problem, including adjusting its lethality, damage through surfaces, limiting operators to one, and random fuse timers, but none quite achieved the goal in mind. The solution that they ultimately went with, and is the rework coming to frag grenades, is that they have removed the ability to cook grenades. Cooking a nade is when a player would hold an unpinned nade in their hand and release it so that by the time it hit the intended target, it would immediately detonate. This was a very useful skill for a player to have, and honestly one that I took a lot of pride in. However, it did make some nades truly unavoidable. Starting in Deep Freeze, an attacker can hold a grenade in their hand indefinitely. It will not cook nor detonate. When released, a fuse timer will begin and the grenade will detonate at the end of the timer. This timer has been reduced from 5 to 4 seconds. If the grenade bounces off of a surface, the fuse timer is further reduced to 2 seconds, bringing it in line with the stun grenade mechanic. This change will hopefully turn the frag grenade into a situational gadget with slightly lesser value, allowing for more diverse operator loadouts. Thanks to this, more operators will be gaining the option to bring nades. The current operators with this secondary gadget are Glass, Gridlock, Finca, Nook, and Sledge. Operators gaining nades in Deep Freeze include Blackbeard, IQ, Lion, Osa, and Sens. Like many players, I had mixed feelings about this decision, but I'm willing to give it a shot and see how it goes. Several operators are getting loadout changes in the new season. Blackbeard will be trading in his EMP impact grenades for frag grenades. Capital will gain access to the EMP impact grenades. Grim's loadout will gain EMP impact grenades at the cost of his breach charges, but he'll still have the bailiff for soft destruction. IQ is gaining access to frag grenades. Lion will be trading both his EMPs and GON6 for frag grenades. Osa is trading her very underutilized smoke grenades for frag grenades, and finally, Sens is trading their Gon 6 for frag grenades. On top of secondary gadget changes in their loadouts, both IQ and Grim will be affected by a weapon balancing change coming to the 552 Commando. It flew under the radar, overpowered for a while, but they finally caught on to me. The damage for the Commando is being reduced from 47 to 43, meaning the extended barrel attachment will no longer cross the 50 damage threshold that allows it to be a two-tap monstrosity. The vertical and horizontal recoil have also been increased, but it's nothing severe in my experience. Maestro is receiving a little more tailored buff in the new season, likely in an attempt to increase his pick rate and viability. He's gaining an additional evil eye, going from 2 to 3. The evil eye's battery is also being increased from 5 to 6 seconds, meaning it can fire more lasers without overheating. This new battery allows Maestro to outright kill one armor operators with a single turret and injure two or three armors. As a trade-off, the Evil Eye's overheat timer has also been increased to 6 from 5 seconds. Finally, another update to Bulletproof Glass is coming in Operation Deep Freeze, particularly targeting Mira's Black Mirror. The glass will be shattered if a drilling projectile is able to drill into the glass and explode. Drilling projectiles include Ash's Breaching Round and Kali's Lance. It should be noted that Kelly's Lance does not drill through gadgets, only surfaces. The Black Mirror is counted as a surface or part of the wall itself. Gadgets like Zero's Argus Camera, despite its ability to drill through surfaces, will not shatter the glass. And Flores' Rotero drones also remain ineffectual. The patch notes made a point that this shatter mechanic would also affect Osa's Talonite Shield, the Bulletproof Camera, Maestro's Evil Eye, and the Deployable Shield. However, I couldn't find a situation where a drilling projectile could shatter their glass without also destroying the gadget outright, both for Ash and Kali. I assume for now this point was made for consistency's sake since all these gadgets utilize the same bulletproof glass. 
This change, specifically regarding Mira, opens up options to deal with the very oppressive and space-controlling gadget that the Mir is at range. Sometimes walking up to a Mira and striking the Mir with a melee hit is a fool's errand and the canister is usually heavily monitored. Defenders can still protect this utility with Jaeger's ADS or Wamai's magnets, and you're also able to shoot Kali's lance before it detonates. Ash's breaching round does not seem to share this vulnerability. And that wraps up the balancing changes coming in the new season. Season 4 will be introducing a new map to Siege called Lair. Located on the coast of Portugal, Lair is the headquarters of Deimos, the mysterious new antagonist behind Harry's death and the attack that left Ash in a coma. The last new map, if we don't count Reword Consulate, was Nighthaven Labs back in December of 2022, so I'm definitely looking forward to something fresh, and Lair definitely delivers with elements we haven't seen before in Siege's map pool. As a huge military facility that Deimos uses to train his Caritas Legion, Lair's location was built to restrict access from the air, sea, and land by being built inside a seaside mountainous cave structure. This allows for a series of underground tunnels and direct access points to all three floors from various attacker spawns without the need for repel, lending to an extraordinarily unique exterior. The lowest floor of Lair, the basement, is the grittiest part of the map, damp, dirty, and full of dangerous chemicals and equally dangerous work. The basement contains a single set of bomb sites, lab and lab support, in the dead center of the layout. From the inside, take the blue stairs on the northwest corner of the map, or the yellow stairs in the southeast corner, to ascend to the first floor. This floor is a little cleaner and brighter, a place for general soldier activities, and houses two options for the bomb objective. Less insulated inside the map, the options include bunks and briefing on the east side of the map, or armory and weapon maintenance on the west side. Bunks includes an externally breachable wall accessible from the security terrace. Reception acts as a central focal point of this floor, branching off to each of the three major portions of the map, which are largely color-coded in blue, green, or yellow, each with a set of stairs to match. Come upstairs with me one more time by taking the blue stairs still on the northwest corner, the green stairs in the northeast, or the main stairs on the south side of the map, right by reception. The second floor of Lair is the topmost level and is the most refined and sophisticated, with a more executive feel. You'll find a single option for the bomb sites on this floor, Office and R6 Investigation. These large rooms span a great deal of the real estate on this floor and feature an externally breachable wall from the insular courtyard balcony into the mask room, which is connected to master office and is a planable location. On screen, I've been displaying floor plans I created for Lair and you're welcome to save and share them. Links to the X and Reddit posts containing them are in the description of this video and I really hope they help. In general, Lair was a little disorienting to me at first, particularly the tunnels outside because it took me some time to actually find the building itself. But with a little practice, the map does start making sense and the routing becomes easier. One thing I love is the access to all floors without needing to repel, particularly options from the lift spawn point. There's many different ways you can approach the building and ways you can navigate within it, which is nice. The map design regarding vertical play was also well done, distinguishing breakable and non-breakable areas with the consistent use of wood planks or concrete. Lair will be coming to all playlists in Operation Deep Freeze, and you will not be able to ban it in Ranked for the duration of the season. Season 4 will also bring a handful of playlist updates to the game. On top of the brand new map, Lair, we'll see some map pool shuffling throughout the playlist. As promised, the map pool for Quick Match has been expanded. The current rotation includes Bank, Chalet, Coastline, Clubhouse, Consulate House, Favela, Nighthaven Labs, Tower, and Villa. Deep Freeze will be adding the following maps to join this roster. Emerald Plains, Hereford Base, Fortress, Lair, Presidential Plain, Stadium, and Yacht. They've also revisited and improved the Quick Match pre-setups in the currently available map pool. Coming off of some community feedback, the standard playlist map pool has been adjusted to reflect the same maps found in Ranked. This includes the following 16 maps. Bank, Border, Chalet, Clubhouse, Coastline, Consulate, Emerald Plains, Cafe, Canal, Lair, Nighthaven Labs, Oregon, Outback, Skyscraper, Theme Park, and Villa. Notably, Stadium has been removed and replaced with Lair. Again, Lair will not be bannable for the duration of Deep Freeze. Stadium was also replaced by Lair in the Free For All, Weapon Roulette, and Deathmatch arcade playlist, and Lair was added to the Golden Gun arcade playlist. This covers all of the map pool updates coming in Season 4, but we're not done with playlists. The Free For All arcade has been updated to include impact grenades and all operators will have Oryx's hatch climbing ability. Operation Deep Freeze will be adding a brand new learning tool to the game via the map training playlist, which you can play solo or with your squad. This playlist is designed to help players learn positioning, common routes to bomb sites, the location of important rooms, and general navigation through two drills. The first drill is called Target Drill, where dummies are placed throughout the map in common enemy positions. 
You will be directed to dispatch dummies located in particular rooms, allowing you to learn the map and warm up your aim in one go. In the target drill settings, you can choose to turn aggression on or off. When aggression is turned on, enemies will shoot back, but you will not be eliminated, since the main purpose of this playlist is learning maps. The second drill available in map training is the landmark drill. This one's more like a visual quiz where you are shown an image of a location on the map and your goal is to navigate there where you can interact with the landmark to move on to the next image. In landmark drill settings, you can turn the landmark audio clue option on or off. When the clue is on, the landmark will play a recording that you can use to pinpoint the landmark when you're nearby. Both the target drill and landmark drill have settings to choose which side you play on, random, attacker, or defender. This allows you to change perspectives as needed to aid in learning. Map training will launch with seven maps to choose from, Bank, Chalet, Clubhouse, Consulate, Cafe, Lair, and Oregon. Future updates will come to map training and Ubisoft is looking for player feedback and requests to help that decision making. Map training isn't the only new playlist coming to the game either. As we saw on the roadmap, the first iteration of Versus AI is rolling out at the launch of Operation Deep Freeze. Versus AI is a playlist that you'll be able to play the bomb mode against Defender artificially intelligent bots on the clubhouse map. These bots are improved from the ones you currently find in training grounds and they are trained on actual player behavior. The AI is engineered specifically to emulate real players in the way they set up and defend their bomb sites. You can queue into Versus AI as a lone wolf with your squad or matchmake with random players. The difficulty can be set to beginner or advanced to match your own abilities and desire. Players can choose between IQ, Glass, Recruit, Sledge, Thatcher, and Thermite, while the defense, the bots, will play as Bandit, Capcan, Mute, Smoke, and Valkyrie. These will be expanded in future updates. Versus AI provides a great environment to learn and practice in a real but low-stress environment. Newcomers to the game will be required to play a match of Versus AI before they gain access to the PvP standard playlist. Finally, we come to the end of the playlist updates section and the end of two playlists in Siege. Both Situations and Training Grounds, also known as Terrorist Hunt, will be removed from the game. As sad as it is to see Terrorist Hunt go, it was a mode that required a lot of maintenance to balance and fix after patches, and the bots within it were outdated. Various options exist in the game that have successfully replaced the core reasons Terrorist Hunt was played. These options include the Shooting Range versus AI, the Map Training playlist, and something I think many players forget about, the Arcade playlist and its game modes. The removal of these outdated playlists will allow developers to focus on the new AI as well as core game changes and development efforts that otherwise were being needlessly sucked into keeping Training Ground's pulse alive. It was fun, I'll look back on it fondly, but it's time to say goodbye. Operation Deep Freeze will finally mark the full release of the Reputation System. Last season, the Commendation System released which allowed players to commend their teammates and be commended for acts of valor, dedication, or guidance. The system also allowed for a vote system to commend the other team for a game well played. In Deep Freeze, the Commendation System will be hooked into the Reputation System, allowing your commendations to affect your reputation. This system will be activated in a grace period that focuses on delivering warnings and tips to players before the consequences and rewards associated with each reputation are dealt out. The Reputation Center UI has been updated to reflect these new features. The standing page has been updated to include your current reputation, behaviors that are most impacting you, and the impacts your reputation will have on your account should the grace period end in your current reputation. The Commendations tab allows you to view the commendations in each category you've received, both in the current season as well as during the lifetime of the system. The Misconduct screen continues to track behaviors that would negatively affect your standing, such as reverse friendly fire or griefing. You can also see any active penalties you're under, such as restrictions from using voice chat. The How It Works tab has also been updated to give us a glimpse into the penalties and rewards that will be associated with each of the five reputations. Respectable is considered the neutral standing where most players will reside. Players in this standing receive no access penalties, but also no earnings, and they will be eligible to receive ranked rewards and commendation rewards. Working backwards, the second lowest standing is disruptive for players who demonstrate a pattern of toxicity. Players in this standing will receive no access penalties, but will receive a 25% penalty on their renown gain and experience points earnings. Disruptive players will not be eligible to receive ranked rewards or commendation rewards. The lowest standing a player can earn is dishonorable, given to those who demonstrate frequent toxic behavior. Players in this standing will have their access to ranked and standard revoked, as well as garnering 50% penalties to their renown and experience point earnings. Dishonorable players will not be eligible for ranked or commendation rewards. Meanwhile, the positive standings above respectable will garner the carrot over the stick. 
esteemed as the second highest standing for frequently positive players. Players in the standing will receive a 5% bonus to their earnings for renown and experience points, as well as 5 points towards Alpha Pack progress. Alpha Pack progress is tracked on the standing tab, explaining that Alpha Pack points are earned for each match played in the applicable positive standing for a maximum of 4 packs per season, 100 points per pack. On top of being eligible for the ranked and commendation rewards, esteemed players will unlock a reputation card background. The highest standing bestowed upon consistently positive players is exemplary. These players will gain a 15% bonus to their renown and experience points earnings, 10 points towards alpha pack progress, their ranked rewards, commendation rewards, and an exemplary reputation card background. As far as the ranked rewards penalty goes, I'm not sure if that hinges on the reputation you end the season with or if it will use a weighted average to determine if you earn the season's ranked rewards or not. It would be unfortunate if you spent 99% of your time in a reputation that did not have that penalty, only to fall into it at the very end. I wish I had the answer for you, but we may just have to wait and see. And that just about covers the player protection portion of this video. Operation Deep Freeze will also be releasing several game improvements to features like the main menu, settings, the battle pass, and the controllers. Stay tuned to hear more. The main menu of the game, or the top banner, has been reorganized to streamline information, and squad status has a new display that includes obfuscating your squad itself while maintaining a count out of 5. Players can find a new Fidelity FX Super Resolution 2.0 option in the graphics settings, which is a temporal upscaling algorithm that can produce higher resolution frames from lower resolution inputs. This option, when turned on, favors quality over performance. This isn't the only update coming to the settings menu either. Season 4 will be introducing even more controller improvements, including full customization by allowing players to map their own controller schematic. Options for trigger and stick dead zones have been added that can now be set to zero. I won't pretend to understand most of this as a PC player, but these changes did receive warm welcomes upon their announcement, and they will further open up the ability for players to customize their experience to their desires and abilities. Players who spend time in custom games will see a well-appreciated update to spectating. First, the limit of spectators allowed in a match has been increased to 4. In addition, a button was added to the lobby that allows players to easily switch between spectating and playing. As promised, the Battle Pass will also be receiving some updates that improve its navigation and visibility. Players will now be able to interact with the zoomed out map to view and claim rewards, which is a feature I desperately wanted since the revamped Battle Pass's release. Everything I've discussed up until this point is slated to release on the launch of Operation Deep Freeze. I'll now be moving on to discuss some of the things we can expect later on, starting with things slated for the mid-season patch of Season 4. Firstly, we can expect a lab test server that contains the beta for the revamped shield mechanism so that the community can test and provide feedback on a pretty major rework to shield operators in the game. We can also expect more updates to the controller ecosystem. Most notably, a solution to leaning will be implemented. The default setting allows for leaning while aiming, but leaving aim cancels the lean. The new alternate setting will allow for leaning while aiming, and stopping aim does not cancel the lean. Players will have to, however, aim again to cancel the lean themselves. We also have a good idea of some changes coming a bit later in Year 9. Season 1 is slated to deliver the finished shield rework. We can also expect in Year 9 new ranked requirements, updates and enhancements to the shooting range, battle pass, and map learning tools. Versus AI will also be expanded to include attacker AI, more AI operators, and new maps. The team also hinted at a new proposal they're working on to bring more player agency into the standard map pool by giving players some control to enjoy the maps they want. There wasn't much details on this, but I reckon it could mean for some matchmaking preferences or community polls. To continue with the map pool, they will also be re-energizing their efforts to get all maps back into quick match. Solus and Azami were also both identified as operators they're looking to adjust, so we can tentatively expect some word on these powerful operators in the coming months. Finally, during the Operation Deep Freeze reveal, Ubisoft announced the Siege Marketplace, a safe and anonymous web platform in which players can buy and sell eligible items, such as weapon skins, between each other. It will be available in browser via PC or mobile. All transactions will use R6 credits with a 10% transaction fee. The full launch of the Marketplace will be in Year 9, but it will be entering beta in early 2024. You can register for this beta now using the QR code on the screen or on Ubisoft's website. And that brings us to the conclusion of this video. Year 8 Season 4 Operation Deep Freeze will be bringing many new and exciting features to the Siege, including the new Defender Tuberau, a brand new map layer, controller improvements, the full reputation system, several new learning and practice tools, and more. 
The new season is scheduled to release on Tuesday the 28th of November. The download will be more significant than usual at around 50 gigabytes because this update aims to reduce the overall disk space Siege takes up, going from about 70 to 50 gigabytes total. I hope this video helped you get up to date with the changes coming in the newest season of Rainbow Six Siege. If it did, please consider liking the video and sharing it with your friends. One of my goals is to be accepted into the Ubisoft Creator Program and success in videos like this will go a long way in that application. Thank you and I'll see you in Operation Deep Freeze.